Alright, we're heading to Ready Made RC. I'll be right back. Behind the scenes. Look at them go. It's, it's, they're breaking the sweat back there. What's happening, Joe? Hey! I'm gonna Look at you with your man pack. This is an EDC bag. This is my fuck out. Let me become less uncool. There we go. All right, there you go. Coming around. Man pack. This is Tim. So of course, this is Ready Made RC, the home of FPD Flight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that was. If you want the girls to really think you're cool, you gotta wear the goggles. What's happening? Thank you. How are we doing? Pretty busy up in here. Yes, it is. I like your split. Your split signs. I'm gonna go back behind the booth here. What's happening? And then, um, uh, trying to sneak. I heard you guys were back here looking at our wing last night. Uh, maybe Matt. I missed it. I didn't get to see it. <laughs> you didn't get to see this? No. Let's take a look. All right. So, uh, as some of you may or may not know, I just built a uh, wing from RMRC. It was the MS Composite Swift 2. It's 30 inch wingspan. You know, this looks less bulky than I thought it would in the picture. I guess the fins were taller in the picture I saw. Yeah. So this is a prototype. Does it have a name yet? Uh, the Rayco. The Rayco. Let me come around here so I can get better audio. Rayco. I like it. It's 38-inch wingspan, uh, 4S, and... Uh, we're not sure what motor we're going to put on here, but the fastest we've had it up to was 139 miles an hour. Um, it will have quick interchangeable wings, so if you crash, you could just change it real quick. Um, this pod will pop off, and you can pull the wing off and change it, so if you're in a race situation, you can uh, not be out for the day, and the wings will be a nice, cheap replacement. Is the pod held on just with the Velcro? No, it actually pins that go all the way through. Oh, cool. Wow, so the, that holds the whole thing together as well. That holds the whole thing together. And then you can buy wing replacements, which is probably what you just said. Yeah. See, so you have wow. all your nice main problem. gear in there. And then the ESC Still is... Still an early prototype, so... Yeah. yeah. We have vents for the ESC, I guess. Yeah, they'll yep. have... Uh, yeah. And then you could just unplug and put a new I, wing in. I really do like that. So there's no carbon fiber tape, or there's no uh, strapping tape or anything like that. Not needed, no. It'll all pin itself together. You've got nice little uh, feet on the bottom, nice. Yep, a little, the, and right here on the center pod, too. And then do you have uh, launching holes? I put pop bottle uh, tops in mine so I can chuck it with my fingers. We haven't put any launching holes on. To do the, uh, the overhead, overhead launch, launch, yeah. Jason suggested I do that, and I was like, well, it's the first throw, so maybe I won't throw it over my head backwards. I'm going to have to check that out. And then, uh, what's the ETA? I know you, this looks like uh, something... A couple you months. To... It's a few months. It's still pretty early, and uh, once we finalize the design, then it's got to get manufactured and shipped, so... Okay. Uh, I'd say three months at least. Well, it's pretty cool. It's, I like this. This mod looks a little bulbous, but other than that, I think it's all awesome. So what all is in here? Well, I know we have things in the trough on the bottom, but... Transmitter is mounted in there. Yeah. The whole, uh, all the FPV gear is mounted in the, uh, in in the, the pod itself. Of it, yeah. Oh, and then we have a camera and a camera. Yeah. Oh, okay, so, so I, see, I see. If you're not recording in HD, you pull that off, it's a little bit slicker. So if you're racing, you know, you don't want that little bit of drag on it. Um, we are going to actually uh, round this off a little bit more as well up front so it's not quite as flat maybe, up front on it. Maybe make it a little more Rayco ish, a little Rayco. more aggressive and pointed. Right. Batman. Right. Oh, yeah, there you go. And uh, these obviously are not, these, are, uh, these aren't what's going to be used for the fins. These are just for the prototype testing. And that was the thing with me and my uh, composite is uh, with the little winglets, man, it was pretty good straight and level, but when I would turn, it would get. Yeah. The wobbly, yeah, when you have the, the 
the wings, uh, the, the stabilizers further back, you'll get a lot of side to side uh, 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 wag on it. So this having them for, further forward and, and closer to the body, uh, you get, yeah. One thing I thought about, I'm just talking out loud here, since we, you know, work a lot together, is I was thinking, man, what if my winglet was it went through to the other side? So it came it, out of both sides. So it, when I landed, it acted as a. Uh, so it's acting as your little skid down there. I've yeah. seen a few other designs do something like that. I've doubled my uh, yeah. ability to stabilize. Right. Thank you guys. We look forward to seeing this. All right. Thanks, Jim. What else we have? We have the Surfer 1500 up here. Which, uh, yeah, I, Joe, I, I'd be when I flew this wing, I said, Jason, what do you think? And he said, I like it, but man, that Surfer 1500 is just so easy to fly. Yeah, it's like a giant teddy bear. So, um, and it can't really, we have crashed it over and over again, and I just foam tack things back on. Yeah, that's the, that's the fun part, man. Now we gotta get you into the multi rotor racing. Well, I've got the uh, mud skipper, but I heard you guys were moving to a new platform. Yeah, we have the help in 122, or not 122, but 204. 204, yeah. yeah. So everything's living in the 180 to 210 range. Yeah. Yeah, well, 204 size, so you five inch props, and it does well. Is there a help? in the yeah. booth here? Uh, yeah, there's some on the display over there, like there on the side. Okay, I'll go take a look at that. So, um, awesome. You know, Thanks, Jim. Thank you, you sir. Want to fly fixed wing or uh, multi fixed wing? I'll let Jim out. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about the Hellbender. I'm not seeing it over here. We have the Sky Hunter, we have the Mako. I've done reviews on both these birds. The Mini Sky Hunter is interesting. Um, I, what do I have? I have the Vector in mind, and uh, it really does kind of uh, soften things up and make it easier to fly. And then the Mako, there's uh, theories and thoughts on that. That's essentially like the, the prototype wing they were showing us. But uh, I run my Mako with the mouth on it. I've run it both ways. There's a glass dome. Some people don't like the dome because of the reflections that it gives. Um, I've kind of moved away from uh, observation, pan and tilt FPV into a minimalist FPV that's more about flying than it is about recording video. So the Mako is good for that. And it is a fast, it's got some weight on it, especially if you load it down with a flight board and all that good stuff, GPS. And um, so it's faster and it grooves more than let's say a really light wing. But it's a whole other deal than flying a light EPP uh, Swift 2. This guy is a little more, um, we, we have a video review of this and we flew the teeth off of it, but it is a little, it flies a little fatter, if that makes sense. It flies a little more, a little, I don't know if the word would be. No problem. Then we have the Penguin, which is the ultimate for long range. I don't do long range with the current environment that we're in these days. We have the monitors. I always have a monitor with me. I run a dual diversity. It has a, a DVR built into it. And I think everyone should have a monitor as a backup. If you're in the goggles, there should be a monitor somewhere that you're utilizing. Should just take a look around the booth. Comes with a camera and transmitter. Oh, you already got that. Yeah, we're in Columbus, so not too far away. Yeah. So if you order something, we might still have a lot of shipping out that day if it's in stock. And, uh, Dragon Link, awesome. And I've run most of these cameras, and I've actually personally done some testing on, you know, you have, uh, what do we have here? Show takes care of most of the things that I need when oh, I Oh, yeah. And uh, they always have cool stuff coming out. We're still, I think, on the tip of FPV and where it's going to go and all that good stuff. So who knows what's coming next? Yeah. Let me ask you, what transmitter do you use? DX9. Okay. And all I was, the way. I was saying earlier, I moved to a DX9 for the vocal cues and yeah. some of the other stuff. So I did an actual comparison. I used to run the Tyrannus, and I had two quads that were built identical, same tune and everything, uh, just different radios, motors to the T. Flew them back to back, and the spectrum felt way better. 
so you can actually so tell me why do you think people will go to Tyrannus? They Tyrannus is cheap and it offers a lot. The Tyrannus has a price point of like two hundred dollars and it can do a whole lot. Uh, the gimbals, in my opinion, are a little sloppy and the build quality of the radio is a little sloppy, but you get what you pay for. Um, but the Tyrannus, to me, it just, I felt like I was in more, or not in the Tyrannus, the Spectrum, I felt like I was in more control of the aircraft. It seems smoother. Maybe it's the gimbals, maybe it's the placebo effect, I don't know, but Spectrum all the way now. Awesome. Well, that's good to know. I actually have been talking to them about FPV in general. Yeah. They were like, tell us what we have to do. Yeah. And then I did the same thing with Kevin. I let him fly my stuff, and he switched right after, too, and... We did the same exact thing with our Team Violet, Ogbots. We uh, handed him the remote for something that was set up on Tyrannus and something that was set up on Spectrum, and he switched. That's switched. awesome. That's awesome. DX9. Yeah. DX9 says ready-made RC. Well, I'm glad that I went there. That was totally, uh, no one had said anything to me. I just yeah. went there. No, I love it. It's a little pricey, but it's worth the money. Yep. All right, y'all. We'll have a great show. All right, see you. We'll see you tonight. This is the ready-made RC booth at Toledo. You know, uh, while we're in ready-made, let's go uh, visit Eagle Tree. They are not connected, but I utilize a lot of Eagle Tree equipment in my ready-made gear. If you're an FPV or you know what Eagle Tree is, they have the vector. John, um, I'm just wondering if you have anything super cool that you can put in my hand. <laughs> something new and hot well this is pretty neat man jason was by a little earlier and was checking this out i mean this is a small quad with a full-blown vector system on it okay and so is this the vector vector it is it is the vector and yes we are working on something that uh probably gonna be pretty cool and pretty popular in the racing community and so uh, i actually did this on a 250 quad a qav 250 oh yeah i remember that yeah and this is your personal quad that's one of mine that i fly yeah pretty much a test bed it gets uh, gets knocked around pretty good. We've actually had to look at those 3D, tubes, man. Had to 3D print some new uh, motor mounts here. Very yeah. nice. Works pretty good. So how are we doing? Uh, what are we promoting mostly at the show today? Is it uh, the the uh, vector unit itself? Well, since last year we've uh, released the info panel and.